Um, well, hello everybody. My name is Lisa. I hope you can hear me in the back. Um, I'm from Cleveland, and most of you probably don't know me. Um, I visited the DC church two years ago in their summer conference, and I saw how um, God was moving in Pastor Li Che's conference. And so when I was invited back and heard of this conference, I was really excited. And I've also heard of Pastor Vincent's messages, Chinese and English on YouTube. And I was like, wow, I really need to experience this in real person. And so thank God I am here today with my mom. Um, and I just want to thank you so much for giving me the space to share a little bit of my experience with God, as well as how this conference has been for me. And um, so I actually really didn't know what this conference was about. I just felt God leading me here. And so when I received the paper, it said the chaotic era. I'm like, wow, that sounds like my life. That sounds like, <laughs> that sounds like my mission field. And um, I so, so I sort of chuckled to myself. And to give a little bit of a background of where I was at and where I am today. So I recently graduated school and I started work. And during my school time, I was very driven, very um, ambitious. I was doing a lot of leadership activities, extracurriculars, starting my own business. and. I was building my own kingdom. And so one day I was late to an event and I was driving my minivan to school. It was raining extremely hard. I was driving probably 95 miles an hour. Wow. Yeah. My mom knows about this already. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I was driving, it, there were three lanes on the highway. I was driving really fast. And then I realized, wow, I can't really see the car in front of me. I should probably slow down. So I was tapping on my brakes, and I passed the bridge, and all of a sudden, my car spun. So I basically hydroplaned. And what that means is like your car is on water, and not it doesn't have traction on the ground anymore. So there were five cars around me. This is on a Saturday afternoon. I spun across the middle lane, and I was moving backwards in front of a red car on the furthest right lane. And so I was just staring at this, it, this, it was a middle-aged man, he was balding, I remember. I, I, I like, we, we connected with our, um, we saw each other in the eyes and we both knew what we were thinking. We're thinking, any moment now, we can die. And I don't know what else is gonna happen. And so, just so intuitively, my heart just cried out like, God, I cannot die yet because I have not done enough for you with my life. And right after that prayer, my car automatically like spun 90, 90 degrees, and I just landed in the patch of grass where the merging lane was. Like, so I didn't hit anybody, and that was a miracle. So anyways, that is a quick background story of where I was and um, where I am today. So my mission field, I am actually working in consulting right now, and it's really hard to explain. I basically sit on planes twice a week, fly to a random city, work there for multiple days, and then I go back home. So that is where God has called me to be, and that is completely, utterly chaos because there are so many uncontrollable variables and influences, not only in that lifestyle, but also in that career. Um, in my career, I see so much of the superficial, what the world deems to be successful. The fame, the status, the money, the power. And um, so I see the chaos. I'm living in it. And so um, coming here, I just wanted rest, rejuvenation, and I wanted to be empowered to go back into my mission field. And um, your message this morning was a complete confirmation um, of what I have been experiencing professionally, uh, personally, and spiritually. I always say, like, when I was praying this morning about what to share, the first thing that came into my mind was spiritual warfare. It's, it sounds crazy, but it's so real. And when I was praying about what to share, one of the first words that came to me was deception. And this is what chaos is, right? It's, I googled the definition. <laughs> and it's to, um, it's complete disorder and confusion. And that is what Satan wants us to experience, right? And um, 
and like what I shared before, what the world deems to be successful, that is a de deception. Your motives, like always challenge yourself. Why am I doing the things I'm doing? Um, why do I believe in the things that I believe in? And always go back to the truth as t your baseline to judge those things. And so, um, like you shared in Romans 14, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in, in the Holy Spirit. And so, like, when we are living life, like, what are we pursuing? Are we pursuing the, our own kingdom, like the kingdom of this world, or are we pursuing the richness of God, right? And then the second thing that came to my mind was the um, importance of discernment. So amongst this chaos, um, it's so important to understand God, his word, and his spirit. Because we cannot trust our emotions. We cannot trust our minds. We cannot trust our hearts. Our hearts can be deceiving. So what can we trust? And that is the spirit, the Holy Spirit and the truth. And so putting on the armor of God, that was, that's like my everyday. I always tell myself, I dress myself for work, but do I dress myself spiritually to go out there? And it's so easy to forget to read the word because life is busy, right? And then when you're young, you're like, hey, I have so many more fun things to do. Um, but imagine this, you're going out there to your battlefield every single day and you wear everything. You wear the entire shield of armor but you don't bring your shield. Then you're just in defense mode all day, right? And we are created and we are empowered to fight for God's kingdom, and that is so true. So um, it was deception, discernment, and direction that I received. And when we hear him and we are able to discern what we experience, then we are able to follow him, follow his will. Because direction is so important. Confusion, deception is all about you just walking around in circles. Like you're not following God's voice. Um, and lastly, that increases our devotion and dependency on him. And this is like a constant everyday cycle that I try to live through and live by. Um, and yes, that's what God shared with me. Um, some of my struggles that I experience, when you are living in chaos, it's really hard to find rest. And sometimes when work is overwhelming, I, um, it's hard to find rest, it's hard to be fed physically. I know my mom has lectured me a lot about that. Um, but I always remind myself, like spiritual is priority. So even if I hey, pulled out all nighter for studying or um, didn't allocate my time correctly to spend time with the Lord. Like being spiritually fed is first priority. And um, spending time in prayer to rejuvenate, to connect with Him is the reason why we should be, uh, is the reason why how we should be living every single day. And so my prayer is that um, I do find rest and time to rejuvenate. Um, in him and to build my um, build my spiritual man to mature more in spirit, be in the word, and to carry that like double edged sword every day wherever I go. So thank you. Lisa, okay. I'm so thankful that you see your working field as a mission field. And I think that's the spirit of the remnant, okay? That's the Daniel, David, Joseph of this era. And uh, you have defined <laughs> chaotic rightly. That's what I have in me when I put down this title, okay? So um, it seems to me you can see and sense deceptions really well. So now, for your case, it is about putting on the full armor and living it for your case. Okay, you, you have known enough. You know, the spiritual dark forces and all, how it's consuming you and all. Um, so what you need is I give you three things, okay? If you want to be a witness for the Lord in, in your working fields, you know, you really have that purpose in you, now no, you need relevance. And the Holy Spirit will give you that, okay? And um, so 
That's one thing. No? Uh, keep listening to the message and keep praying by the truth. And then be with people. Okay? So the Holy Spirit works that way. Okay? Feel. You have to feel people. You know, it's not, you, you're, gonna, you're not going to just be successful, you know, one off straight. You're going to meet a lot of people, but you've got to feel people. Okay? Second thing is you need an anchor point. You need a good church. Or same thing, you need people who can give you good advice. Anchor, you need anchor point. Daniel has three friends with him. Okay? So, um, and then the third thing is, I hope you can see bigger things, even outside America. Outside America. All right? Learn to see bigger things. If you, if you don't know what I mean, you can learn from Ellen and, and uh, Mary. They went to Penang. Why did they go? Did they tell you? They say, because they have seen enough of this American Christian culture, so they want to get out from this culture to see something different and feel something different. And um, I want to invite you to Penang next year. <laughs> if you want to come, you like to travel, you like to fly, come. And I brought um, Christine, Caleb, and me, they are Pastor, Pastor Sarah's uh, uh, children, you know. Christine, you know, she graduated with, a, with an honest, good honors. She gave up a job, go back to Penang, take a low pay, work with dyslexic children, and then, and then go on with that. Just because she wants to be in a church with the mother to be trained as a remnant, she's envious of those who, who is growing, you know, spiritually. So eventually, what happened was, you know, um, something happened in her school. You know, she started off with uh, like a small teacher, uh, you know, just a teacher, it's an insignificant teacher, and then something happened in the school, and then people left, and now she's made the, the supervisor, she's promoted, and all, so she's taking charge, you know, and all. Now, real things happen like that. You need to see that kind of evidence, okay, with people who really take steps of faith in their lives. You're not far, okay? You need to see bigger things. All right, that's what I have for you.